Hi, my name is Walter Emery and I'm the founder of Airshaper. In this video, we will explain what a boundary layer is. Let's start with the no-slip condition. This one states that no matter how smooth the surface of an object is, the air will always stick to it, meaning that the velocity on the surface is always zero. At the other extreme, we have what is called the free stream velocity, which is the velocity of the undisturbed air far away from the object. To understand what happens in between these two extremes, let's look at the flow across a flat plate. As the undisturbed air meets the leading edge of the plate, it will stick to it, because of the no-slip condition. And as the air travels across the plate, this layer of air sticking to it will grow thicker and thicker. Now this region, in which the air moves slower than the undisturbed free air stream, is called the boundary layer, and within this region, the viscous forces are dominant. Outside of the boundary layer, the viscous forces are much less important, and sometimes even ignored in fluid modeling. You can have a laminar boundary layer, in which the layers of air move nicely parallel to each other and to the surface, or a turbulent boundary layer, which is filled with vortices featuring velocity variations in all directions. If the undisturbed air itself is laminar, and there's nothing to trip the flow, the boundary layer will start off as a laminar one. Now, as the air moves across the plate, the distance traveled since the leading edge increases. And if we use this distance traveled from the leading edge as the characteristic length for our Reynolds number calculation, it's clear that the Reynolds number will keep increasing as we travel across the plate. When the Reynolds number crosses a critical value, which can be different for any application of geometry, the laminar boundary layer will transition into a turbulent one. Now, a turbulent boundary layer features a completely different velocity profile, which can have a dramatic impact on the separation location and the friction and pressure forces on your object. In applications like airplanes, where the shapes are smooth and streamlined, it's important to keep a laminar boundary layer as long as possible. Because a turbulent boundary layer will increase the friction drag, and it is typically also thicker than a laminar boundary layer, which increases the effective thickness of the airfoil, which increases the pressure drag. In less streamlined applications, it can be beneficial to trip the boundary layer into a turbulent one. Turbulent boundary layers carry much more momentum and typically push the separation location further downstream. That's the reason why golf balls have dimples, or why athletes wear special suits or even shin tape to reduce the weight they leave behind and thus reduce aerodynamic drag. So that was it for our introductory video on what boundary layers are. If you liked it, please hit the like button and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and drop an interesting comment below. Thanks a lot for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.